Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. Hi, everybody. Hello. How was your day? You know, I was working all day. I know. You got that full-time gig going Girl, on. Girl, full-time damn job. And then after that, you haul your raccoon ass over to the studio and you Just record. For and on the weekends, I... we're recording Patreon Working like a slave. Content, but we have fun. <laughs> we do have fun. It's a lot of fun. Um, before we get into today's episode, we just want to issue you a disclaimer, honey. This is a politically incorrect podcast. So hide your wife, hide your kids. Yeah. We say bad words. Mm -hmm. We have offensive and objectively stupid opinions yeah. about a lot of things. And we will not apologize no. for it. And so if you're so This might not be the dumpster for you, but <laughs> if you're not, then this is your raccoon home. Yes. Welcome. Welcome. Also, go follow us on Instagram at Reality TV Cringe. That's the party dumpster over there. And we got a Patreon, patreon.com slash Reality TV Cringe, where we're covering a lot of bonus shows on a there lot. that you don't hear on the general pod. Love After Lockup, Gypsy Sisters, Old Seasons of Welcome to Plathville, and many more. And many more. Mm -hmm. Thousand Pound Sisters. We just started yes, that. Yes, girl. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh. So, yes, join us there. We'd love to have you. And if you are watching on YouTube, please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Literally everything you do helps us to grow on the platform. And we really, really appreciate it. Thank you. So before we get into our coverage of Welcome to Plathville and also 90 Day Fiance, I understand that somebody called in with a question or a statement for us. Yes, we do have another speak pipe. So oh, and by the way, if you want to call yeah. in and leave us a message, it's entirely free. You have up to 90 seconds. All you have to do is go to speakpipe.com slash reality TV cringe. Leave us a message and we'd love to hear from you. Yeah. All right, so who called? Um, this is from Erica and I believe it's about Plathville. Okay. Hi ladies, new listener here. I found your podcast while looking to commiserate with somebody on this season of Welcome to Plathville. So thanks for reviewing this show. I was watching the latest episode with my husband and pointed something out um, that he didn't seem to see. So wondering what your take is on it. Barry is in LA with the boys and Kim is being asked to move in with her boyfriend. And then we have the little girls here with Lydia. And she's saying, oh, everyone else is on vacation, so I decided I'll just take them on a road trip. But the road trip is to a recording studio, and I'm just not so sure that this wasn't something that has been planned, and it was interrupted because her parents just decided they're going to do their thing, and we'll just parentify her even more. Just your thoughts on that. Um, feeling pretty bad for her in this point, her parents are living their own lives and leaving her to care for these little girls despite any plans she may have what are your thoughts or am i overthinking this thanks um you go first because <laughs> yeah. i called you today and i screamed about this i know <laughs> i think lydia is like the forgotten child like they really just don't care and they think that she's so well-rounded and mature and can handle things on her own even though she's only 18 19 at this point and so, yeah, I think they totally just leave her in the dust. And they're like, we're going to go party and do our own thing. Have fun taking care of the little girls because you're old enough to do that. It's fine. Yeah, I think she's the Logan yeah. of the Plath family. And uh, in this episode, you know, the Barry is still gone. And so Lydia, I guess, is back from Nashville. And she's taking care of the girls. And she's talking about Jesus a lot. She's up in her closet. Mm -hmm. But I just felt really bad for her because I think she wants to have her own life. Yeah. Obviously, we learn that she has a boyfriend, which is awesome. But like, she wants to get out and live her life. And Barry, I mean, I understand that you're doing better, that you're mm -hmm. stepping up. But like, you can't just be dumping your kids on the one kid who's been parentified this entire time. I feel bad for her. I know. I feel bad for her, too. And she's just smiling her way through it and praying her way through it. Like, it's not that big of a deal. But I feel like 
it'll come out later in her adult mm-hmm. life, especially when she starts being a mom of her own and realizes like, damn, I've been doing this since I was like right. 10 yeah, <laughs> and having to take care of everybody else, but who's taking care of me? Right. Well, we do know though that this past summer she was traveling in some kind of a mission group mm-hmm. going all across the country. So presumably she was able to break away from the Plath family home yeah. and start doing her own thing. Uh, but yeah, what we're watching right now I think is unfair. And I'm just like, it just makes me more mad at Kim because mm-hmm. Kim, while Barry is in Los Angeles or in California, Kim is down in Crawfordsville, Florida, having an adulterous affair with Ken Palmer. And Lydia <laughs> is the one that's stepping up. I know, it's a plate. joke. It's really gross. It's really freaking gross. And Kim acting like, well, it's my chance to be happy. It's like, okay, but what about your kids You though? have three minor children. Actually, you have four minor children because yeah. Isaac is still a minor. It's not fair. Right. Totally, totally agree. Yes. Thank you, your Erica. your husband. Yeah. <laughs> Can't believe there's a husband watching it. My husband won't watch it. He'll just see it and walk right through the room. He's like, I'm not watching these people. They're so boring. I'm like, they're not boring. They're fascinating. They are absolutely fascinating. All right. Let's get into the season finale of Welcome to Plathville, which is season five, episode 14, entitled To Be or Not To Be. Ugh. That is the question. Okay. <laughs> and the primary things that I wanted to get into, of course, was the conversation between Ethan and Mariah. Mm-hmm. The final moving out breakup of Kim and Barry. Yeah. And the breakup of Ethan and Olivia. And you had said to me last night when you watched it, because I didn't watch it to today, that you have some controversial opinions. Yeah. And I'm thinking, well, that's interesting. Yeah. I don't know if they're going to be that controversial. We end up usually being on the same page. Yeah, we'll see. I'll have you tell me your opinions first, and then we'll see if we agree. (laughs) Okay. Well, before we get into it, what are like some of or like one of your major takeaways from the show? I mean, I'm liking Barry more and more every episode I like the way that he carries himself with the whole like division of everything with Kim like he's just being hella chill even though Kim and her talking heads is like trying to throw him under the bus and act like he's the one that's controlling their finances and controlling the divvying up of everything that they owned when she's just being a selfish bitch like the Mm -hmm. entire time so I'm really liking Barry I think he's like made a huge turnaround from season one season two and I think he's like really grown up and is focusing on his relationships with his kids, even though he's like leaving Lydia in the dust and just like letting her parent the rest right. of his kids. But we do see him during the season, taking them down to Florida, yeah. doing things with them. So I do think he is stepping up. Yeah. And when he was talking about how so many people in the world have never heard their father say, I, I love you. And he just, that's all he wants his children to understand is that he loves them. I was just like, I'm getting <sighs> tear balls. I know. I love getting that. Tear balls. I love that as well. My major takeaway is actually a question and it's a question that I have for you. Oh no. And that question is, When was the last time you cooked a meal? (laughs) Like two days ago. (laughs) I couldn't believe that. Were you mad by it? I was pissed off by Ethan saying that. Interesting. I was pissed off by Ethan saying that. Hmm. That triggered me. And if anything out of his mouth would have turned me, turned my boat in a different direction, it would be some misogynistic bullshit like that. Mm. Because I think they have such bigger issues than who's cooking what meal. Yeah. And by the way, we saw Olivia cooking a meal just a couple of episodes ago. She was cooking some weird mushroom breakfast omelet thing. But like, yeah. it was just so insulting. And to me, reducing their relation down to these gender roles. And I was like, oh, God, because I think he has valid points. Don't get me wrong. I think she does. But like him saying, when was the last time you cooked a meal? I was like, somebody get me my nunchucks <laughs> and my brass knuckles. Yeah. And let's go to Victoria, Minnesota. Mm. That's where I was left with that. And I guess that's where it's going to be controversial. <laughs> it's going to be controversial. I love it when we disagree. Okay. Yeah. So let's get into the episode. You ready? All right. Let's do it. Okay. We start this episode in California. If you recall, last week, Ethan and Mariah sat down on their response respective benches to have a conversation about what went wrong in their relationship. So what was some of your thoughts about this scene? Well, I don't really know who to believe in terms of the whole like music debacle because Mariah was talking to Ethan about it and she does apologize in this segment for overreacting for the music thing. Mm -hmm. But Ethan brings up that 
actually, before they left for Europe, right. there was a moment where Mariah and Olivia sat in the kitchen on her laptop, Olivia's laptop, and Olivia's like, this is the password. This is how you log into your shit. And Mariah allegedly says, oh, thanks. Now I can access it while you're gone. Mm-hmm. But Mariah's denying it in the moment. And saying, like, I don't recall that. I can promise you that never happened. Like, I would have remembered that. Well, she says, I can promise you that never happened on the couch. She doesn't say it in the moment. No, she doesn't. But Mm -hmm. she says, I don't recall. And that didn't happen. Right. And so I just don't know who to believe. I believe Ethan. I don't know. He was so specific. Yeah. And I mean, like, why would he lie about it? I mean, I guess his motivation to... I guess lie about it if he is lying is to protect Olivia. But I don't think he is lying. It's just... It rubbed me the wrong way when Ethan was like, no, Mariah, you had problems with your mom before Olivia came to the picture. It wasn't all Olivia. Mm-hmm. When Mariah's literally trying to communicate to him that the problems with between Mariah and the family were exacerbated by Olivia and he's not seeing that. He's not seeing that Olivia influenced it. So that's where I'm kind of like, oh, I don't know. I don't know I who to believe. I feel like he's not doing that. I feel like he's seeing that Olivia influenced it. His main problem is that Mariah is acting like it's solely Olivia's fault. But and she's not. Of course. And yeah. then Mariah's like, actually, I blame myself more yeah. than I blame Olivia. Uh, but when I was watching that, when he was being so specific about what happened before they went on their Europe trip, my gut told me that he was telling the truth. And I think it probably happened and Mariah wasn't paying attention. Because probably. up until that point, she had her whole existence facilitated for her by Olivia and Ethan. Right. And so why do I have to pay attention? Right. Like, why shouldn't I be writing it down or putting it? In? I don't have to do that. It's going to be fine. Like lazy, lazy, lazy. Yeah. Which is in keeping with her, maybe not paying her bills, not paying the rent on time. I don't know. These other complaints that Ethan also has. So I thoroughly believe that she was given the information. She she didn't remember it. And then ultimately she threatened some kind of legal action because she didn't know how to get to her own music. Yeah, because she overreacted and mm-hmm. she does acknowledge that. And so at least she took ownership over that. But I think the whole like overarching theme of the conversation, which was that Mar- Mariah was saying like, look, Olivia, Olivia's kind of pulled you away from the family. Mm-hmm. She's kind of like talked shit about the family the entire time that you guys have been married. And she influenced my relationship with the family. And I don't think that that's right. And like, I'll be civil with her if it means I can have a relationship with you. Like that was all kind of shadowed under the stupid music storyline. Yeah. Yes. And I'm kind of annoyed that it was still like dragged on to the very right. last episode because I just thought it was like so lame and dumb (laughs) and i'm also annoyed that they didn't get into the credit card situation with details and with facts because that's kind of one of the primary problems yeah is that the siblings made a social media post calling out olivia for lying about kim and the credit card and so if somebody had just taken us through it which olivia ultimately did i think on tiktok she Mm -hmm. told her side of the story like but nobody on that side of the family is taking the time to do it. And we should have been having that conversation. And also we should have been talking about Kim getting a DWI by the time they're filming this. For real. Agreed. And like fucking getting into a crash yeah and almost killing herself like why aren't we talking about that that's right. the kind of stuff that makes me really angry about all of this um we also see ethan apologizing to mariah like mm-hmm. i shouldn't have let you and micah into my marital issues and problems which i found interesting yeah because i wonder if ethan had been running back to mariah and micah and telling his version of events about Olivia and contributing to them turning against Olivia just because he was bitching about it. Yeah. Which is something, I mean, I think you should really never do. Right. You should never involve like your family with the problems in your marriage if you can help it. Right. So he apologized for that. Yeah. And that was good. And I mean, he apologized for even putting them in that situation because it puts them in a rock and a hard place of like choosing between Olivia and their brother and obviously their allegiance is going to be to their brother it's like we talked about it a couple episodes ago about how like if it was okay for Ethan to be talking about his marriage with Micah at the bar Mm -hmm. but I wonder if that was what he was meaning like I'm sorry for like bringing Micah to the Mm -hmm. bar and like talking about it or like maybe mentioning a few things to Mariah but like not really getting into all the details I can't see or maybe he did maybe but I don't know he just doesn't know how to fucking communicate though right I don't know. I thought that was very interesting. Mariah ultimately says something like, I just want you to be free. You know, I don't want you to be unhappy. And this is where Ethan says something like, well, you just don't understand what it's like to have like this beautiful marriage that's just starting out. 
You guys have all of this good energy, this hope and this optimism, and then it gets taken away. And I was trying to interpret here. It sounds like it gets taken away by Olivia, who becomes fixated on Kim yeah. and the problem that she's having with Kim and or the rest of the family. And so as soon as Olivia becomes fixated, because she's just substituted one family life for another family life that resembles it in a great deal. Yeah then his happy future is gone. And yeah. he, and he's basically saying, Mariah, you don't know what that feels like. That fucking sucks. Yeah. And I mean, in her talking head, she's like, it must be really painful for him. But she doesn't say anything really in the mm -hmm. moment, um, which is kind of like a missed opportunity, in my opinion. Like she could have offered him some real comfort and genuine compassion because, yeah, it's really hard. And he, he says, you don't know what it's like to lose something so precious to you. Mm -hmm. Like he has never once like talked bad about Olivia on TV. He's never said anything bad about her, like, or disparaged their marriage in any way. Like he's sad that they are breaking up because of all of this shit that they can't work out anything. And obviously because he wants her to be a trad wife and she, mm -hmm. won't want, she doesn't want to be mm -hmm. one. Um, so I feel bad for him in this moment because I do think he's genuinely upset at their at their marriage ending because of all this crap because they couldn't overcome any of the family. I drama. do as well, but I'm just wondering what changed because we saw like in the first third of this season him bugging Olivia about having kids. Right. So that was just a few months ago. Like what suddenly changed so drastically? Like did she register as a Democrat or something? <laughs> Did she attend an LGBTQIA rally or something? Like, I don't understand. What took you from, I want to have children right now. Can we do it? To, I can't have kids with you. People are saying online, it's like about the patriotism aspect. Like he doesn't want Olivia teaching his kids. I don't know if this is true or not. This is all alleged and from people on Reddit. So take it with a grain of salt. But um, people are saying that it's because Olivia would teach their kids to hate America and be anti the government and all this stuff okay. and it's like and so that's like his end all be all but i'm like i don't know i think it's like faith-based and them having something in common i think mm -hmm. they're so drastically different at this point and he's like i just want to like have similar values when we raise kids is that so hard to have and she wants that too i mean she wants him to like think the same things as her too and like no, be open she's, well she's i don't know if she does i know what she says she says that she's been thinking for years when they're yeah. sitting down on the couch about how like they can have their different perspectives mm -hmm. their different points of view but like as long as they respect one another they can she sees a world where they can raise a child respectfully with like maybe all of the views and the child can choose so mm. i don't know if that's true or not yeah i just i don't see any evidence that it could be about patriotism because Olivia has done nothing that's unpatriotic or hateful toward America. Right. Like the only thing she's, to me, it feels about like homophobia. Maybe. To me, it feels like it's about gay people. It's about this type of a, an issue. And Ethan is just a, a hard pass. He's just got a boundary around it. And he's not going to want his kids to grow up in an environment where that's accepted. And I wish they would just say the quiet part out loud. Like, I is know. that the issue? And I wonder if Olivia is going to come out over time and say whether that is. You know, she's going to write a book and she's going to trash this mofo and this whole entire family for all it's worth. And she's going to make a lot of money from it. I also wonder if it's a Trump thing. Maybe. Uh, Trump versus Biden. I don't, I don't really know. They don't say it, but so we're left to just kind of guess. Mm -hmm. um, to kind of wrap up the conversation between Mariah and Ethan Ethan's like, you don't understand, though, what it's like to be in a marriage because well, he doesn't say all this. I'm obviously editorializing, but you're a kid. Yeah. You haven't been in a relationship like this at all. And you don't stay with your family. You cleave to your wife or to your husband and you put them first. That's actually what the Bible says. And that is what I am doing in this relationship. And you wouldn't know that, though, because you've never had a relationship like that. So how about check back in with me when you're a full grown adult and you have some perspective? Thanks. I did love that. That was so yeah. based, mm -hmm. honestly, because it's true. Like when you marry your spouse, like that should be your priority as opposed to everything else. Right. And he proved that this whole entire series. Yes. He went no contact with his family. Agreed. He almost beat up his dad for Olivia and all these things. And yet it was never enough for her. No, it wasn't enough for her. But like Mariah saying something like, well, I know that when I get married, <laughs> I'm going to make sure that I honor my husband's family and that he honors my family. I'm like, okay, talk to me when you get there, though. Yeah. Shit happens. Life happens. Right. People are different. And drama ensues. Right. And when it does, you're supposed to take up for your spouse first 
and foremost. Well, and like the dif- the difference here with Olivia always has been is like she didn't have to get along with Ethan's family at all. Like she shouldn't have been expected to like have this beautiful, amazing relationship with Kim or any of the kids or anything like that. But she shouldn't have just like not advocated for everybody else to have a relationship with them. Mm-hmm. That's what Mariah's kind of getting at. But she also sucks at communicating because she's 12 years old. And, and, a plath. Know, and she's a plaid. Right. So nobody can actually communicate properly what they're actually feeling. That's the problem is that Olivia never supported the older kids or Ethan having a good relationship with their family. Right. Because she saw the Plaths as solely evil and terrible and awful to be around. And so therefore, nobody should have a relationship. Well, Mariah actually says she never said one nice thing about the family right and i believe it i do too and i believe percent. and ethan didn't argue with her no because ethan knows that's true yep so in the next segment we go back to cairo and this is where we're visiting with lydia she's in her prayer closet looking at all of her scribbled prayers to jesus who i honestly thought was her boyfriend but i guess i was wrong (laughs) i guess it's the actual real boy i know and she's taking care of the three younger girls i don't know where isaac is he's off flying his plane yep um but this is where we learn that lydia has got a man (laughs) i know she got her a man and we saw a picture of him from behind he's a very tall man i was like is that max it's not I, but know, I, know. <laughs> I know kind of looks like it right it from behind she like, seems whoa. really happy she's pretty private about it she says that the family likes him he's the sweetest boy i've ever met he's a man of god do you yeah. mean boy of god do you mean zygote of god <laughs> Do you mean fetus of God? And like, have you kissed? Have you hold hands? What you, they're not fucking. I mean, no, they're not Do you not think fucking. they're dry humping? Maybe. I just learned Grinding. over Thanksgiving what soaking was. What's soaking? I guess soaking is what the Mormons do when some like evangelical Christians. Now, see, I'm, I'm wondering if I get what? it wrong now, but apparently you just stick your pee-pee inside the girl. No. And you soak. What do you mean? Like you just bask you in You just the- bask in the liquid of it all. You soak. And you don't gyrate or anything? Well, you're not supposed to. It's kind of like a different version of just the tip. Or like edging or whatever. Yeah, it's just like, here's my dick up in your punaner, and I'm just going to soak here, and we're just going to feel it like that. And so you're not supposed to move. And it's so dumb because you think you're not going to get pregnant. (laughs) That's not how that works. But it's a phenomenon <laughs> called soaking. And please, uh, if you're watching on YouTube in the comments, if I have this wrong, because I'm a boomer, which I'm not. But if I'm a boomer, tell us what soaking is. Oh, my But I'm God. just wondering, is Lydia soaking <laughs> with her boy around? With her boy around? She's too much of a good Christian girl to do that. Well, but like we were talking to my nephew. Yeah. Who's like grew up in the evangelical church. And he was just like strictly butt sex. <laughs> Because that's Jesus likes that better. And we had to educate him on that. On You can get AIDS from that. And he's like, oh, I thought only gay guys could get you AIDS You can get all that. kinds of different things from that. Only gay guys. And they help me. Ding dong. People need an education oh in my life. God. And so Lydia's so happy. And maybe if there's another season of Plathville, which we can discuss maybe toward the end, whether mm-hmm. we think there will be, maybe we can actually meet her new boyfriend. Yeah, that Just would be really cool. Sweet. I'd love that. After that, we head on back to California. It's the last day of their little vacation. They do a sunset hike. Ethan and Mariah are speaking again, and they go scale some sort of a hill. (laughs) And Barry just thinks to himself that this is great. It's symbolic of how relationships can be healed. You can talk through things with people that you love, and it can get better. And he's really, really happy that they're all together. Yeah, I thought that was really sweet and wholesome. It seemed like a good trip, and I'm glad that Ethan came and like had time with his family away from Olivia. Yeah. It was really good. I thought so, too. Yeah. Then we get to the division of assets, honey. Mm, this In the next scene, we have Barry back home. Um, he's going through some pictures yeah. because Kim's about to come over, and she's going to take some things. And he's trying to select some pictures for himself and pack some things up for her. So what did you think about this? I thought it was kind of wholesome. Like he's just going through family photos and like just cherishing all of the memories. And I thought that was really sweet because I think about like when my parents did this and they didn't want to look at any photos at all. Like they didn't want to look at their wedding photos. They didn't want to look at photos of each other in them. And like when they divided Mm -hmm. photos and everything up, like my dad was like, I don't want any photos of your mom Mm -hmm. and my mom the same way with my dad. I'm like, that's so weird. It is weird. Like I'm glad that Barry can at least look at it all and be like, this is a beautiful 
marriage like and kim says it in her talking head too like out of 25 years of marriage like the best things that came out of it were all of their children that they Mm -hmm. had and i'm glad that they both can acknowledge that and they're acting civil i wonder if there is going to be another season of plathville if we're going to get into more drama between kim and barry yeah, it's a little bit telegraphed when Barry talks about knowing that he's going to have to be in the same room with Ken yeah. Palmer at some point in ooh. the future, and he's just going to have to learn how to act, and it's, he's doing it for the kids. But I'm like, ooh, I hope so. Yeah. I want to see how that goes. <laughs> yeah. Because I honestly don't think Ken Palmer wants to step to this. Yeah. I do not think so. Mm-mm. We also learned that the visitation has kind of switched up, mm-hmm. whereas Kim was getting the girls from Wednesday to Sunday and then Barry from Sunday to Wednesday. Now the girls are going one week with Kim, one week with Barry. And I think it was Mercy, the little one, who was saying, I like that better because that means I get to be home more. And be see my dad more. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. shit. Yes. They're favoring their dad over Kim. Oh, yeah. Which is good. I love that. And we already know she's made up her mind to move in with Ken. Of and we already know she's probably living with him right now at the yeah. time of this filming. And so imagine the girls having to go down to Crawfordsville, Florida and spend their 50-50 time with Ken Palmer and Kim making out in the kitchen as they make steak and asparagus on and drink their booze in her mini skirts Get did you dr- notice yes. when she came yes. over in that mini skirt and no bra no bra girl was she sending a message to barry what kind of message would that be like you you miss this because no <laughs> i don't i think having some support is actually way more sexy than just flopping on out there jesus mary and joseph don't body shame i'm not trying to body shame i'm just like support your girls they've got big got big girls i got big girls too they need to be in some kind of a bra they need infrastructure i don't know is she being sexy girl because i wasn't getting sexy no i was getting i need you to put a jacket yeah that's what i need you to do um then we also uh have the information from kim that barry does not want Kim to live in that house. Mm-hmm. And Barry wants to sell that house. And Kim's like, because with Barry, it's all about the almighty dollar. Girl. So well, he doesn't want me to live here. Okay. But you're going to split the proceeds though, uh-huh. right? And you probably have like at least one of those rental properties. And you have the whole ass ballet studio that you right. made him buy you. Right. With the apartment. So cry me a river. Yeah. And then she's like, well, but you know, when I think about it, there's a lot of negative things that have happened here. And so it's okay to leave it. Yeah. Okay. Like you cheating on your husband. Yeah. But she wanted it. Yeah. She she did want it. She wants everything. Of course. I'm really curious to see what their divorce settlement looks like. Apparently by the time she shows up here, they've already pretty much agreed on everything. So Mm -hmm. she's here to pick stuff up. But I'm like, is she getting alimony? Mm. Does she get child support? Because it's 50-50, so why should she get it and not him? Right. Is it just a division of their property and their things? Or, like, is she going to get some maintenance going forward? Because she was she was his wife for 25 years. She it's didn't true. work. Yep. And he gave her a lifestyle to which she became accustomed. He so did. So is he going to agree to pay her alimony for 10 years? Oh, honey? my gosh. And child support on top of that. Because you know she's going to want him to pay child support for the three littles. Yeah, but if it's 50-50, like, she's not supposed to get any right i don't know how it works i think you can still get it really yeah okay well i I don't know it depends on the state laws i really want to know and as far as i know i know they're saying like the divorce hasn't been finalized yet but like i haven't seen anything anywhere me neither about it so i'm like "Mm, i don't know what's really going on okay and then we get to this lionel train set right (laughs) so kim talks about how she wants that train set And Barry's like thinking of a different train set. And he's like, no, that was the train set that my parents gave us. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was funny how Isaac's like, yeah, mom, you're wrong. (laughs) Quickly. I'm like, quickly came to Barry's defense and he was wrong. He was wrong. Mm -hmm. And he admitted to it eventually after he realized, oh, yeah, we have two train sets. Mm -hmm. So here's the boofy one that Bill gave you. And then I'll take the one that my parents got. But you did see Kim back down. She did. Kim even says to the camera, like, I know the moment Barry is shutting down and he's getting stubborn and I know that it's not going to do me any good to argue with him. Mm. And so he'll go and look on his own and figure it out for himself. Sounds like Ethan Plath. uh, Probably. He's just shutting down. Yeah. And he's getting upset. She also says later in this particular scene that she's seen a new side of Barry (sighs) 
since the divorce and maybe if he'd been more emotionally tuned when they were married they wouldn't be on this path and I'm like to myself saying self if my spouse was an adulterous hoe you'd be seeing a different side of me too one that has nunchucks brass knuckles and a gun yeah (laughs) that's the side you'd be seeing of me (laughs) for real so, I mean, what do you expect? Do you expect him to just be super accommodating to your bullshit and your adultery? I think she wanted him to be mad. I think she wanted him to, like, fight for her. Like, maybe she had some weird complex. Like, maybe if he fights for me and gets mad, then that means that he truly loved me or something. I don't know. Like, mm. and granted, I understand maybe her bitterness towards seeing him change into the man that she wanted him to be during their marriage because she did allegedly tell him for 25 years that she wanted him to be different and he didn't and he admits to this he admitted to it like a couple episodes ago about how he could have been better and he could have been more attentive to her needs but it's too late now and so whatever Mm -hmm. but i'm like kim why are you saying this shit and then the producers ask barry this question which i was not expecting they ask him so if kim you know, comes around in like a year or whatever and is like, hey, I made a mistake. Is the door still open? And Barry says, I can't answer that right now. What does that mean? He doesn't yeah. want to answer it? I don't I don't know. Like, I think sometimes the producers catch him off guard. Mm. Like when they asked, um, have you met Ken? And he's like, no yeah. comment. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I think we can speculate. I don't think he would take her back. Mm -mm, No way. I don't think it's going to be that long before he gets a date. He goes Mm -hmm. out and meets a woman and he starts seeing how good it can get out there in those raccoon streets. Yes, I would love that. Without being anchored down by an adulterous hoe. (laughs) Who's super self-absorbed and delegates all of her duties to Lydia Plath. Yes. And eats a lot of sugar. And eats a lot of sugar and also flips her car because she's driving drunk i've got no grace or compassion Mm -mm. for people who drive drunk i just don't there's no excuse for it and so kim you're a piece of shit on its face yep i I, that's what i believe agreed okay and so then they start loading up the trailer little isaac oh my god he's He's just walking around like a cowboy he's got his wranglers on and he's got his ariat cowboy boots i'm imagining (laughs) he's got his little hat on i'm just like look at this young man i know so handsome he's so handsome he's like i'm gonna go to college i'm gonna get my four-year degree and then i'm gonna become a pilot i'm like yes king yes and i see him doing it actually i see him being very accomplished but when he said i will be the first in our family to go to college i'm like didn't barry get a degree did he i know he went to university that's where he met kim right i don't know if it did he finish it or whatever or maybe he didn't get a four-year degree maybe he didn't get a four-year degree or maybe he didn't graduate which is a surprise to me like how are you owning all of this property what is the secret to your wealth i know uh how much money is he making as a transportation analyst or whatever have, his stupid job girl, is i have no idea Shit. so they pack up kim and she leaves yeah and that's it that's all she wrote this that is family wrote. is destroyed do you feel good kim <laughs> is this what really you wanted sad. yeah when they were dividing up everything and it got down to like kim and the baby pictures and she was like can i take all these and barry's like yeah but can i get copies mm-hmm. she's like oh well you can cut out my face of them and he's like no it's a package deal yeah, like this is like, my life in history i, I don't want to cut that. you out me too and he really loved her i yes. think he really did oh, and yes. loved the fact that she had all of these babies for him and they've created such a beautiful family of all these ro- well-rounded kids even though they had no education right Because they were taught by a drunk mom. Right. But it's just like, I don't know. I really loved how Barry was like so mature and just like besides the train set thing, which was just like a genuine misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. I thought it was really great. Kim was expecting like drama, I think. I think so too. And I, I actually think Kim did love him. Yeah. In the way that she could, in the way that a narcissist can. But when you keep in mind that it was Kim that was shopping this show to mm-hmm. different networks, it was Kim who, and Olivia was helping her, it was Kim who wanted the fame. Like, as soon as she got a little bit of it, she bounced. Yep. She left. She peaced out. For Ken fucking Palmer. 
of all the people. I'm like, really? I would have gone on like a fitness journey. <laughs> I mean, personally, I got on a fitness journey. I would have gotten super fly, super hot. And then I would have put myself out. First of all, I would have gotten a divorce first. Yeah. Okay. And then I would have started dating around. Yes. I would also be going to therapy. I'd right. be probably therapizing for a couple of years before I even thought about dating anybody. But that's just me. Yeah. I'm not just going to start running out there and banging Ken Palmer. Yeah, because you're not an adulterous hoe. Oh, my God. <laughs> Honey. Okay. This we are now at the final scene. Yeah. With... Ethan and Olivia. So he returns from California. This is the first time that they have sat down since they talked the last time. And she said, yeah, I know you're still talking, but maybe get a therapist because I don't want to listen to your ass. <laughs> so they're sitting down on the couch and they're talking about their relationship. So what are some of your thoughts about this? I've got a lot of notes, a lot of, I think, poignant things that were said. Well, you but go like, first and say it. No, no, no. What is, tell me. No, you tell me. You okay, tell me. well. The producer asks, like, where they stand. Mm -hmm. And Olivia starts us off by saying, well, you know, in my vision for marriage, it always is going to lead to having a family. But as I've been thinking about having a family with Ethan, that made me face things that maybe I didn't want to look at before and just be honest about them. Yeah. And Ethan says something like, well, honest about what? And Olivia says, the way that you've treated me. Mm-hmm. The deception, the lack of communication, this has actually led to us separating before. Yeah. And it's still happening in our relationship. And so I have to face that. Yeah. Which I thought was interesting because on like a couple episodes ago, you were just talking about how you wanted to have kids with him. Mm -hmm. And now you're saying it's because of how he was treating you. And I don't know, like maybe he was treating her differently behind the camera. We don't know. I don't know these people and their personal lives. I don't know how... Ethan is off camera and how he really talks to He's her. He's stone cold and non-communicative and non-emotional. Well, but it's no, because in season one and season two, he was like, doing a lot of things for her and he yeah, was but we're being in season very five I think that's where he's at right now yeah because they've already separated once and because Olivia kind of belittles him every time he tries to do anything for her that she asks him to do and then it's never good enough I don't well I mean I I guess I mean you have to we have to acknowledge that Ethan is a broken person yes who doesn't know how to communicate yeah and when he gets mad he just shuts down mm -hmm. and there's no access to him so she's probably I can see a world where she wants to fix it she just wants to talk it through and he's like I'm sick of talking <laughs> which is why he doesn't even want to talk to Mariah he doesn't want to talk anymore in his life because Olivia has talked so much to him right but at the same time that's what marriage is you show up anyway if the other person needs some space from you you got to give it to them yeah and he hasn't done it for her escalating therefore the problem that they have now i'm not i'm the last person to root for olivia but i just when he, when he then said something along the lines of you know what you could do to fix this is you could reconnect with your family yeah and make things right with your family which by the way olivia considers her family to be it sounds like abusive at least religiously abusive yeah so you could reconnect with your family get back to your core values and be a trad wife mm -hmm. like you said you were going to be when i married you four or five years ago and this is where we get olivia saying listen you want me to go back to a culture that is geared toward serving men it's a patriarchal culture and so you have a lot of privilege and a lot of audacity to tell me to go back to something that's going to serve you but is it going to serve me no, it's not going to serve me because my biggest dream is to be some man's wife. Well, what if I have bigger dreams than that? Right. And she has every right to feel that way. And I'm not like ever going to say, oh, yeah, you should go back to a patriarchal bullshit religious structure that was abusive and terrible to you and super toxic. So I totally agree with Olivia on that because... Again, she has every right to be an independent woman and like live the way that she wants to live. And if Ethan can't adjust to that, then, you know, so be it. That is, that is what it is. But I do think that there was a little bit of truth with Ethan saying to her, like, I think the root of a lot of your problems is the issues and the relationships with your family. I do mm -hmm. think that there was truth to that. She kind of spun it into the whole religious doctrine stuff because that's the filter that she's seeing everything from. And again, that's fine. Like, it's she's on her own journey. I can't tell her what to think or believe. But I do think that she has a hole in her heart that can't be fixed or can't be filled by anybody unless she learns how to deal with the lack that she feels with not having a relationship with her family and like the loss that she feels but of not being able to 
talk with her parents and like have a good relationship like with you and me like Mm -hmm. she's not going to be able to ever have that with her parents and then she couldn't even have that with Barry and Kim so she's like reacting from this place of like extreme pain because yeah nobody in her family wants to deal with her nobody in her family wants to talk to her she has Lydia Grace but only because it's convenient for her to have a friend Mm -hmm. after Mariah dumped her ass so it's like I feel for Olivia but I think Ethan was right in reading her like you're never gonna find what you want unless you learn to deal with the relationships with your family and maybe go back to some of the like core values in terms of like valuing your family or like loving your family yeah, but he That's didn't say that. No, he didn't. He didn't he doesn't say know how to that communicate. because he doesn't know how to communicate. Yeah. Instead, he said, I think you should go back to some of your core values and reconnect with your family. This is where she brings up the uh, patriarchal right. sort of culture. And then this is where he follows that up with, well, like, you know, men have inherent qualities that mm-hmm. are manly. Women have inherent qualities. Gender norms are normal. And when was the last time you cooked a meal? Like, the way to a man's heart is three meals a day. And essentially what he's saying is you don't do the types of things wives should do to please their husbands. So kind of then so she goes from talking about this patriarchal culture and how toxic it is and how bad it was for her yeah. to him then parroting back to her some patriarchal toxic bullshit, misogynistic bullshit. Like, where's my fucking food? Yeah. Where's my sandwich, bitch? And the thing is, is I do there are so many other things he could have said. Right. There are so many other ways he could have said things. He has so many valid points. I'm actually rooting for Ethan in this conversation. But the way he said that was just, oh, crow magnon man, og make fire. Oh, for sure. Like the major issues that they have in their marriage is that neither one of them can communicate like what they really need from each other because Olivia is coming from this place of like, I really just want you to communicate better to me. Ethan doesn't necessarily get that because he thinks he's communicating okay to her and like he thinks he's doing all of the things that she wants, but it's never good enough because again, Olivia it's never going to satisfy Olivia because she's got her own bullshit. And I think when they separated the first time, they should have just stayed separated. Mm -hmm. She wanted to be divorced from him. And then this whole conversation... still on the show. Still on the show. And then this whole conversation, she kind of turns it around while like saying, Ethan, you're the one that wants to divorce. Like, why don't you say it? It's like, no, bitch, you want a divorce too. Yes, but it does sound like he has been saying things like, if you don't say yes to these three conditions... Uh, for marriage, then we cannot be together. Yeah. And I I loved when she kind of responded to his bullshit, misogynistic, where's my sandwich bitch with, it would be different if I loved to cook. And if like I had a passion and I felt really good and excited about cooking. And then when I cooked for you, you said, wow, that was so good. You're so good at it and made it into something that was a higher expression of my love for you and your love for me. But instead, it's like, if you don't cook, then I don't love you as much. So it's conditional. She's talking about conditions that she needs to meet in order to be in a relationship with Ethan. And at the end of the day, here's the thing. When they're saying our values don't line up, I don't want to bring kids into this mix. I think that's enlightened af Mm -hmm. i think thank you for thinking about that before you bring people into the world and confuse the shit out of them and give them all your problems of course thank you thank you but at the same time uh, ethan he needs to learn how to say what he actually means and i read a comment on reddit that i thought was kind of interesting about this if you don't mind it's from user girl goal goals 95 she says i'm from the south and religious and can confidently say ethan didn't mean that comment literally about the three meals a day he meant the type of woman that would cook three meals a day a woman that wants to be a wife and a mother and shares his values of family and faith he likes traditional gender roles many people do they just aren't on tv olivia isn't wrong at all for what she believes and wants and not wanting that ethan isn't wrong for wanting that Mm -hmm. either they just want different things olivia wanted those things when they got married now she doesn't it's okay i don't understand why ethan wanting to a stay-at-home wife and mother makes him a misogynist or indoctrinated it's a very common thing in the south there are women that want that for themselves and they are 100 percent not oppressed speaking from experience you want that for yourself (laughs) yeah (laughs) you want to be a stay-at-home i do and you want to be the crunchy mom who cooks the meals and grows the food and does all the things well and and i do cook all the meals Mm -hmm. for my wife and she's not a misogynist like and she you know has always told me like once she starts making more money and like we can I can quit my job and be a stay-at-home wife like she expects me to be doing 
a lot of the housework and I'm like, yeah, that's fucking fine. Mm -hmm. Cause if I don't have to work, then props, that's cool with me. So like, I don't think, I don't know if he was necessarily coming from an inherently misogynistic place. I think he said it pretty poorly because he's fucking dumb and doesn't know how to communicate his, um, wants and needs and i also want to speak to like the whole aspect of how much olivia has changed because i saw a few other comments on reddit that i thought were interesting like change is normal in a relationship and in a marriage everybody grows everybody evolves as people but like our core values and our like core personalities don't necessarily change and i think olivia changed so much and changed like her whole aspect of herself partly because I think she doesn't really know who she is. She's trying to figure out herself because she came from such a oppressive, patriarchal, religious, strict um, structure and family life. And so she's really trying to figure out who she is. She's clinging to the complete and utter opposite of what she grew up to, what she grew up to believe and act like because she thinks that that's how she'll find herself. And that's fine. Like do whatever you need to do, figure out what you want to believe, be who you want to be. That's fine. It's just she doesn't know who she is. So she's completely changed from this person she promised Ethan she would be. And Ethan's like, what the heck? I thought you were like the same person. Now we're like completely different people, like completely different. We can't even find one little tiny speck of common ground. So Mm -hmm. like, how can we raise a family? And she's triggered by that and whatever. And that's why they're breaking up. And I'm glad for that. So I don't agree with you that people don't fundamentally change their core values because I've lived on this planet for, am I in my sixth decade or fifth decade? I don't really know how it works, <laughs> but I'm, I'm 55 years old. Yeah. And I have changed my core values a few times over, whether that's spirituality, whether that's perceptions of myself, mm-hmm. whether that's fucking perceptions of society, mm-hmm. politically, I have changed over and over and over throughout the years. And I think that it's pretty normal for us to do that. And I think life is about that. And so I think... And you, we cannot discount that Olivia was 20. Yeah. And I agree 100% that what she's living now is a reaction to how she lived before. And so mm-hmm. it's like a pendulum swing. Here yeah. she was living with her family with 10 other kids in this very strict, patriarchal, hyper-religious situation. And the pendulum kind of swung to where it swung, <laughs> swung to where she got married to Ethan, but she still found herself in much the same kind of a construct. And mm-hmm. she's moving with the, the final swing all the way up here. So she's in reaction. I think she's in reaction. I think ultimately she's going to end up like right in the middle, like the pendulum always does. And I think Ethan is going to too. Yeah. And what that means for me is I think when she's 30, 35, she's going to look back in this and she's going to see Ethan in a different way and see herself in a different way. I hope so. And I think Ethan is going to be a 40 year old man (laughs) and he's going to look at his 24 year old self and how he threw away a relationship with someone who had a lot of good raw materials to work with. I am not an Olivia apologist, right. but she's an intelligent, beautiful, thoughtful person who gets it wrong a lot of the times, but you try and check with me when I was 20 to 24. I was a crazy person. Yeah, same. I just feel like he's going to look back and he's going to regret the judgments that he's making on this woman that he is supposed to love unconditionally. Yeah. So when he says, you changed, and I changed in reaction to your change, and Olivia's like, people fucking change. Yeah. And furthermore, a marriage should be a place where it's safe to do so. Right. It should be safe for me to explore myself within the confines or the connection of this marriage. And you should support that. I mean, the horseshit I've put my husband through, all of my husbands, by the way, (laughs) the horseshit of my journey (laughs) that I put all of my husbands through and each and every one of them gave me space to do it. Right. So I, I feel like, I feel sad. I cried about it. Yeah. And in the end, when the producer's like, this sounds really final. And Olivia says, but I still, I wish the very best for you. And the way Ethan looks at her. I know. Like looking her up and down and saying, I love you very much. I know. I felt that. I felt that they, neither one of them really, I, well, I think Olivia didn't want to be married to him, but I think Ethan especially was like, I didn't, I didn't want any of this to happen. I didn't want us to change so drastically that we couldn't even like make a marriage work. And I was thinking about it in the context of my own marriage and getting married young. Everybody fucking told me not to get married young. Everybody's like, don't do it. It's the worst mistake of your life. You're never going to make it work. It's going to end up in divorce. Like nobody, besides you guys, really nobody was like in support of us getting married really young. And 
I guess part of that comes from like how difficult it is to be married at such a young age because you have two things you have to do in a marriage. Like you have to grow together as a couple, but then when you're young and you get married, you have to grow up and you have to grow up individually. And that's really fucking hard when you're trying to grow Mm -hmm. up as a person and try to work on a marriage. Marriage is hard. And so Mm -hmm. like they're really young. They were really trying to make it work for a long time. Their brains aren't fully formed yet. They're not fully formed at all yet. Scientifically. (laughs) Scientifically. They're not fully formed adults yet. Yes. And so of course they're like making mistakes left and right. And like this was the episode where I actually did start to feel for Olivia a little bit more because for as much as she has toxic behavior and manipulative tendencies. I think a lot of that comes from her shitty fucking family and her toxic upbringing. And she doesn't really know anything different. And she really needs to spend time on her own and like working on herself and going to therapy with a therapist that'll actually help her deal with all of this shit and the religious trauma of it all. And so she can be better and like Mm -hmm. have a good healthy relationship with somebody who loves her the way that she needs to be loved. And I wish the same thing for Ethan. One thing Olivia said that I thought was so poignant was that um, she was born to two people who held their principles higher than their love for her. Yeah. And then she says, and I don't want to perpetuate that by having kids and doing the same, but what she should have said, and I don't want to be in a marriage with somebody who holds to their principles more than their love for me. Right. Like, I don't want to continue this pattern in my life. Yeah. And that's why you're probably right with Ethan, the whole like divide in their beliefs is probably gay based or it something is because he's talking about like well mutual respect for each other's different opinions doesn't negate right or wrong and yep. these aren't my rules mm-hmm. they're rule implying that they're rules from god or whatever right. so i'm just like okay ethan you got a lot of growing up to do and yep. if you want to raise your kids to be homophobic and religious or whatever and like fine but no, well not what, fine but what, i mean I mean, I can't, Right, we're in America. Like right, you absolutely. have the right to raise your kids the way you want to raise them. It doesn't mean I have to agree with it. I don't give a shit. Just wait until you have a gay kid though. Right. You know? Right. And that's how it always happens with these religious people. Like I know people from my church growing up that have 7,000 kids and they preach constantly about how homosexuality is wrong and all of this shit. And I'm just like, wait until one of your kids comes out though. Mm-hmm. And then what are you going to do? Send them to conversion camp and traumatize them for life. A lot of them do. Yeah, a lot of them do do that. Yeah, I just, you know, I just feel like Ethan is moralistic, idealistic, or yeah. he's got an ideology around his morals that's mm-hmm. just problematic. And, and it just doesn't allow for the different types of people in the world, the different shades, the different everything. Like, it's just stupid. Yeah. It's also so myopic. It's yeah. like just you've got blinders on in your little life, your Jesus life, which, by the way, there's a lot of different things that you do that actually aren't in accordance with the tenets of your faith. But that's OK, though. Right. Right. It's just Olivia having compassion and acceptance and tolerance for people who aren't like her. Like we're taking liberties here because we yeah. don't know that that's the fundamental issue. But it sure smells like it, honey. Yeah, it, does. it sure smells like it's around gayness and LGBTQ and probably politics right because they mentioned politics and society and things but i'm just like oh grow the fuck up i know even then i'm not entirely (laughs) sure what olivia's full stances are on Mm -hmm. that kind of stuff because she's still friends with her brother what's his name nate nate or whatever string bean who is very anti-lgbtq which he removed from his bio recently on instagram yeah so i don't know if he's been getting hate yeah, from he's, it or he's definitely getting hate and after Olivia's you getting hate. allowed olivia to put makeup on you yeah. and dress you up with makeup and i don't know if it was a wig or in a dress or whatever and i'm just like what y'all need some therapy mm-hmm. y'all need to get yourself together it's like yeah look at the log in your own eye before you start picking out the speck in somebody else's eye you judgmental fucking assholes right anyway so um but they're kids you know when i yeah. was that age i was a missionary honey which is yeah. the most offensive thing here talk about values changing <laughs> i was a missionary three times yeah going to other people's indigenous lands and trying to convert them to my religion how right. audacious and offensive and i would never presume to do anything like that but these are kids yeah and when you're a kid and you're converted there's something different about it it's like this fire in your belly that you have mm-hmm. for jesus you see it with lydia right now yep in her closet yep 
I know. God bless in your closet. But like, talk to me when you're 30 and your husband's cheating on you and you've got a bottle of wine every night at 5 p.m., Lydia. Right. And then we can have a conversation about what it means to be alive on the planet. Seriously. These kids acting like they know anything. Y'all don't know shit yet. I mean, and look at your mama. For real. You already know it doesn't stick. For if real. You watch your mama. Well, Wow. I just thought it was so good. Girl, when you compare and contrast Welcome to Plathville with what we saw on Sister Tell Wives this season, it. including the tell-all that we are currently slogging through, I just feel like there were so many more poignant, important moments. Yes. Um, I enjoyed it and quite a lot. And this family feels more real. It mm-hmm. feels like they're not fucking lying to us from the get-go from season one. Like, yeah, they kind of put on an air in season one of like, we're this happy family and everything. And they have these problems, but like they still haven't really been hiding anything. They're just honest, like saying what it is. Oh, they're hiding stuff. I well, mean, Kim, Kim like is currently living DUI. with Ken Palmer. Yeah. And Kim got a DUI and there are things that are being hidden for show. Sure. Well, maybe we'll see that next season because maybe right. it'll be like a sister wives type of thing where we're going to be delayed on the information. Who knows? I don't know. It'd be nice if we could see the DWI stuff. I would stuff, love. I, I would love. Shit. Yeah. That DWI stuff should have been handled in this season. So yeah. I, the fact that they didn't means that they're hiding it from us and it is what it is. But if yeah. they come back, I would love to see Ethan courting another woman yes. I would love to see Micah courting I would love to see Lydia's boyfriend yes. I would love to see Barry going out on the Tinder or something oh swiping this way and yes. that way farmers only yes, yes. <laughs> farmers only.com get you a farm girl yes. honey to take care of all of them cattle. I love yeah, it we love that for you Barry <laughs> <laughs>